The breaking news is Tuesday, the 9th of April, 2024. Uh, Lloyd Austin's Senate hearing has been interrupted three times now by protesters uh, wanting to get their message about Gaza heard. Secretary Austin. Let me start by thanking this committee for all that you do to support the U.S. military, our troops, and our military families. As Secretary, I've always been guided by three priorities. Defending our nation, taking care of our people, and succeeding through teamwork. Our budget request for fiscal year 2025 will advance all three of these priorities. First, the President's request will invest in cutting-edge capabilities across all domains. And that includes $48.1 billion for naval and shipbuilding capabilities to strengthen and modernize our, our fleet, and $61.2 billion to reinforce U.S. air dominance, and $13 billion to bolster Army and Marine Corps combat capabilities. Our request will also provide $33.7 billion to strengthen our space architecture and $14.5 billion to develop and feel cybersecurity tools. It will direct $49.2 billion to modernize and recapitalize all three legs of our nuclear triad. And it will sharpen our tech edge through a $167.5 billion investment in procurement and $43.2 billion in R&D. Second, this budget request will support our outstanding troops and their families. And that includes raising base pay and housing allowances, investing in better housing, and making child care more accessible and more affordable. The request will also fund vital work to prevent sexual assault and suicide in the military. And third, this request will help the department further deepen our teamwork around the globe. Our network of allies and partners remains a strategic advantage that no competitor can match. And you can see its power in our strengthening ties across the Indo-Pacific. In today's expanded and united NATO, and in the 50-country Ukraine defense contact group that I convene to ensure that Ukraine can repel Putin's aggression. Our budget remains rooted in our 2022 national defense strategy. Our request positions the United States to tackle the, the uh, department's pacing challenge, the People's Republic of China, with confidence and urgency. It will also provide resources to meet the acute threat of Putin's increasingly aggressive Russia. It will help us tackle the persistent dangers from Iran, North Korea, and global terrorist organizations and other malign actors. And it will help us continue to deter aggression against the United States and our allies and partners and to prevail in conflict if necessary. Now today, I want to underscore three key messages. First, even as our budget request The committee stands at recess until the uh, Capitol Police can restore order. Enough is enough. How many children have to die? How many children have to die for you to be satisfied? Enough killing my people. Enough. Stop bombing Gaza. Stop funding Israel. Stop funding Israel. The committee is in recess. Let me uh, once again reiterate that uh, it is not appropriate uh, for comments or demonstrations by the uh, spectators, audience here. Uh, we are conducting a hearing, and we will do so. Uh, we are. Uh,
I would direct the Capitol Police to uh, with remove the demonstrators. Mr. Secretary, you're recognized for your remarks. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, again, I want to underscore three key messages. First, even as our budget request abides by the mandatory caps set by the Fiscal Responsibility Act, it is aligned to our strategy. We made tough but responsible decisions in this budget that prioritize near-term readiness, modernization of the force, and support our tremendous uh, troops and their families. Our approach dials back some near-term modernization for programs that are uh, not set to come online until the 2030s, which will require top-line growth and on-time appropriations in future budgets. Second, we can only fully reach the goals of our strategy with your help. I'm grateful that Congress passed the fiscal year 2024 appropriations in March, and the single greatest way that Congress can continue to support the Department of Defense is to pass predictable, sustained, and timely appropriations. My third and final message today is that the price of U.S. leadership is real, but it is far lower than the price of U.S. abdication. As the President has said, we are in a global struggle between democracy and autocracy. Our security in these turbulent times relies on Americans, American strength of purpose. We remain determined to meet this moment. And that's why our budget request seeks to invest in American security and in America's defense industrial base. It's also why the administration has requested nearly $60 billion in a national security supplemental for the Department of Defense. Now, that supplemental would support our partners in Israel, Ukraine, and Taiwan while making investments to increase submarine production. About $50 billion of this supplemental would flow through our in industrial base rushing aid to our partners while creating good American jobs in more than 30 states. I'd like to thank all those who have worked to pass an effective funding package. And now we are more than two years into the Kremlin's war of aggression against Ukraine. And Putin is betting that the United States will falter and abandon our friends and leave Ukraine in mortal danger. If the Kremlin prevails in Ukraine, it would embolden would-be aggressors around the globe. The United States would be far less secure if Putin got his way in Ukraine. And President Biden has warned that Putin will not stop at Ukraine. If America walked away, we would put the free world in peril and risk unimaginable cost and dangers. And we know that China and others are watching and learning from what Putin does and how we respond.